Do you want to create augmented reality work instructions, but you don't have 3D data? This video is made for you. In this video, you can see a walkthrough from start to finish on how to create accurate content like this in a matter of minutes. What you will need is a subject, this can be anything, an iPhone or iPad with LiDAR scanning capabilities, and WorkLink Create by Scope AR. To get started, go to the App Store on your mobile device, download 3D Scanner app and WorkLink by Scope AR. Open 3D Scanner app and start scanning in low res by pressing the record button. Make sure to scan all sides of your objects until there are no more black areas. Slowly walk around the object until you are satisfied with the result. After the scan, press Colorize and select High Quality. This will improve the way the scan texture is displayed onto your object. Optionally, you can also refine your mesh by pressing Refine. This will improve the accuracy of your model. I'm using medium quality now, as I want a trade-off between high quality visuals and good performance. As a guideline, I would suggest to try to keep your face count below 200k. We colorize in high quality again to reapply the texture. The result already looks really good at this point. Next, press Edit to further polish our scan model. Use Transform to rotate your model parallel with the blue line and translate it to the center of the red and blue line. To remove unneeded geometry, go to Actions, Crop with Plane, save the model and press Back. We can now validate our work by pressing the AR icon and place our model next to the original for comparison. We are now ready to share. Be sure to check textured and zip files and share as an OBJ file. After sharing your assets, go ahead and download them to your local device. And let's go ahead and unzip this archive file. Now you can see your textured output, your material and your OBJ. These two files you'll need to import in WorkLink Create. For ease of use, let's rename these files before we import them. Next we can go to create.scopeAR.com and log in with your username. In here we can create a new scenario. You can import your files by dragging and dropping them onto the asset library window. Importing your model into the scene is as easy as drag and drop, but first let's go to the default state and drag and drop. That already looks great. In our generated scenario assets, we will see a material. Let's rename it to LiDAR scan. In material preset, use diffuse unlit and select your texture. Now we can go ahead and actually alter some of these steps. So let's go to the first step. Minimize our step hierarchy, asset library, timeline editor and the object properties. Let's open up our sequence editor, the UI editor, and our checklist editor. Additionally, let's preview our UI window by clicking on View UI. And within this yellow dotted line, you'll actually see the interface that the final user will see as well. In our first step, let's select it 
go to the UI editor and create an intro splash. Let's create a second step where we'll create some callouts. So continue your first step. As a template, we'll use blank so that we can see our callouts. And to create our callouts, let's minimize the sequence editor and the UI editor. Let's go to the step hierarchy. In here, we'll create a sphere. To make it workable, let's minimize the checklist editor as well and open the object properties. Let's scale the sphere to a workable size, 0.01 and position the sphere to the place you would like to call out. Let's set the visibility to ghosted in the standalone mode and the device mode. Scroll down to create a callout. And let's reduce the offset to half a meter. Next, let's repeat this process for the other callouts as well. For this, we can just duplicate the sphere, move it to a different location, our callouts are overlapping a little bit, so let's kill them differently. We can all select them at the same time and then change the scale. As a next step, I might want to put some additional em emphasis on the battery. So let's open the sequence editor again. In the step hierarchy, let's delete all the other callouts except for the battery. And in the UI editor, we'll use content, template, As an inset, we might want to create a little video, so import our assets for that. An additional highlight of the battery might be useful to our user, so let's minimize the sequence editor and UI editor. Let's create a new cube, and let's resize it to the battery size. To make sure our object is not obstructing our own geometry, let's change the appearance to ghosted. Let's also request the user to provide some feedback. If we add a checklist item, you see this show checklist bar appear. Let's click on it so we can preview. Let's ask the user to respond with taking a photo they're doing. This will later on be recorded in our CMS for later review. To finish our procedure, let's go back to the sequence editor, create a new step, and create a finish procedure. And we can preview our experience. In the end, we want our objects to overlay on our car, so we don't actually want to see the scanned data. So let's go back to the default state, select our object, and change the standalone visibility mode to ghosted, and the device visibility mode to hidden. This will allow us to make sure our alignment is done properly in standalone mode, and in device mode we'll be able to see our callouts laid over our actual car. To change between render mode, standalone and device mode, you can also click here on top. I'm still not completely satisfied by the size of my callouts, so I will readjust them again. Next, let's create a tracker so we can actually 
have accurate tracking on our model. To do that, let's go to Window, AR Trackers, create a new tracker. There are three tracker types you can choose from. You can even use multiple trackers within the same scenario. One option is to use a markerless tracker. By default, a markerless tracker is created in the XYZ origin of your scene, but you can translate it to any plane or location you like, such as in this case, the top of the battery. To align with the real world, you would simply need to point the center of the camera of your mobile device to that same location and tap to snap in place. A second option is to use a model tracker. Currently available for HoloLens 2 and soon for Android and iOS devices as well, we'll use the third option for now, image tracking. It requires a little more preparation, but it's a great way to ensure consistent tracking results when you're planning to publish this AR experience to a fixed setup with multiple different users. You can use the default image. And let's translate this to the top of our battery. And now we're ready to publish this project. So let's go ahead and save our file first. And then let's publish it. Publishing a scenario will publish to iOS, Android and HoloLens 2 all at once, without any additional required steps. Next what we want to do is print our standard tracker. So make sure when you cut it out it's exactly 10 by 10 centimeters and then we can go ahead and place it on our real life object. Open WorkLink on your mobile device and log in. Lock the data in place by pointing your camera towards the marker. Tap to confirm the placement. Switch to device mode to hide the ghosted 3D data. Now we can have a look at our final product and go through all the steps. As a reference, this is how the same published scenario will look like using a HoloLens 2. User feedback checklists such as this picture will be stored on our content management system for later review. You can log in with the same credentials as WorkLink. Be sure to visit scopeyr.com for more information.